Okay, y'all, we are back at it. Sergio just came over and helped me lift this thing back into place. This morning, I'm gonna start with getting all of these joints ground down. We'll probably have to grind, fill a little bit, grind again. I'm not gonna be super anal about it. It is an exterior outside gate that I highly doubt people are gonna walk up to and like, you know, nitpick. This was a piece of furniture inside my house that people are gonna be sitting next to and staring at the whole time. That would be different. But for something exterior, let's just get it ground down. Pretty flush, make it look nice. These gates are gonna get powder coated. Powder coating doesn't hide as much as you would think. So we've got these ground down nice and flat. Again, there's gonna be tiny little holes in there. I didn't wanna go too much further until we cap these sides because we're gonna be grinding on that surface again. So what I'm taking is I'm taking the same material that we used for these sides and I'm just gonna cut right there. That's gonna be the height. And then I'm gonna use the bandsaw. We'll just run right along that edge. We're gonna make little caps. Then we'll put them on here, weld them in place and then grind it smooth and this will look like it's all one solid piece of metal. One of the other ways we could have done it if we really wanted to is we could have run the two by on the outside here and then cap the top if you want, leave the bottom open. That way uh, any water that does get in can get out. I think we are able to get two out of that piece, which is pretty good. Be a little toasty. But now these will just made up right there like so okay we'll wait till that cools down before we uh demonstrate that one not really the easiest spot to clamp something in place so we're just going to line it up hold it in place now we're going to go through we're going to weld it all the way around and then we'll grind it we'll grind this little radius into it on both sides Now obviously we still need to flip it over to do this underside, but that is kind of what the finished product looks like there. And really you can geek out on this as much as you want. Again, if this was like a finished piece of furniture, feel free to like take a little extra time and make that like ultra super perfect. But if you look at most wrought iron out there, uh, this is like way further than most of those uh, shops actually go. And for good reason. There's a ton of time in finishing out edges and stuff like this. Okay, well all four corners, both sides took significantly longer than I had planned especially because I got like 17 phone calls in the meantime, and it's really hard to talk on the phone while you're grinding corners. So I had to stop, talk on the phone, start grinding, stop, talk on the phone, yada, yada. Anyways, they are done. Corners are done. And now we're gonna be moving on to our center section. This just happened to work out perfectly. We had this flat bar, I believe that's half inch. I haven't really measured it. Mathematically, it would make sense to be half inch. So I'm gonna use that to rest our one by three on top of, and then you can see we put another piece of this flat bar on top, we are flushed out right there, which means we are dead center. So this is gonna be our spacer. It's just gonna be on top of this two by that we're using to hold everything up while we're welding it together. And then we already pre-cut all of our four by four spacers that are gonna give us this dimension. These welds, obviously, we're not gonna be able to grind down, so they gotta look halfway decent. I'm kind of going back and forth on how I should do these. I should tack tack on both sides, run all of them, make sure everything works and then come through and re-weld it. But right now everything's as clamped as it's like gonna get. So should I just tack tack both sides, fully weld this one, then move on to the next one? I don't know what the right answer to that one is.
crappy thing about this being 20 feet long is I gotta constantly unclamp and pull the welder to the other side, reclamp. Well, here's the hope that it goes right because uh, we welded the other side fully. So we're just gonna fully weld this thing and, and hope for the best. Got a little hot at one point. It's not too bad of a weld though. And uh, this is 14 gauge, or 16 gauge, sorry, the cross section. So they're a little bit thinner and we're welding on an edge with a tiny gap. Sneaking in, buddy? Yeah. Inspecting my welds? Yeah, always. Okay, how are we looking? Yeah, there you are. Did I pass? Yeah. We get a little close up action. You can see right there, that's where I started and stopped, but we're looking all right. We're looking all right. Okay, aside from flipping it over, we've got all of the horizontals in. The welds are decent. There's a couple little things I could work on. I wasn't really wrapping my corners as good as I should have on this pass. So when I came to do these sides, uh, it ends up not looking that great right there where that side kind of stacks over top. They're gonna stick together. That's the most important thing in my mind about welding. And then second is you make it look good. Now, before I flip this, cause I'm kind of by myself right now and it's not really gonna be easy to flip by myself. Uh, let's do the wheel layout. Now all right, so here's what I came up with just from like one Google search. So hopefully this is accurate. They said basically take the length of your gate, divide it in fours. So that would be five feet, right? So 20 foot gate divided by four is five feet. So that would be the distance in. But then it says subtract about 10 to 15%. So if we came over to five feet, subtract about 10 to 15% from there. I didn't feel like doing that much math, <laughs> even though it's really simple. So I'm gonna go four and a half feet. So basically, Four and a half feet over, that's where these rollers are gonna go. Hopefully it makes sense. Do I need three on a gate this big? I don't know. For now, we're gonna do two. These rollers are actually wider than the uh, two inch stock. So I'm gonna take these two pieces, I'm gonna put them on the top and the bottom. That way I can clamp this tight and I'm not clamping it, it's pulling to one side and then we have a bigger overhang on the other. Now what a lot of guys do, depending on the style of gate you're building, is you can actually cut this out and you can inset this in. You know, again, depending on the style of gate you're building, you could probably honestly also offset them like that. I want the height though. So I'm gonna go underneath like so. All right, let's get this piece down there, this piece up top. All right, now I just realized I kind of screwed myself <laughs> because I just totally took away my welding surface, but I guess I can weld right here and right here and that'll hold it. We can remove this top piece and weld it all the way across. All 
Okay, well, I opted just to weld the entire tops. I figure all the weight's gonna be on these two wheels, so we should probably make that pretty strong. So we're gonna be back tomorrow, and with Sergio's help, I'll flip this entire thing over, we'll weld the last little bit, and then we're pretty much done with the gate. We'll set it on the track. Okay, this is the last day of this video. You can see I brought my trailer because I'm confident that the gate is gonna be leaving today. Uh, I had to take the truck over to Courtney Tire to fix that rear flat. We found another little nail hole in it. I swear, I don't know what it is with that truck, but I've never really had to deal with flat tires, except for that damn truck. That's not too bad, huh? I gotta say, she was not like unmanageably heavy, so that's a good sign. The one thing I'm trying to avoid is I'm trying to avoid putting in uh, some vertical supports. Now obviously these, these move, right? And they're gonna move. And less movement is better for your welds cracking and all that, but I think it looks cleaner without having any vertical supports. I've seen some gates that are similar sized without them. I've never seen one this big without any vertical support. So once we stand it up, I'll take a look at it, reevaluate. I don't think we're gonna see like sag in these, maybe you will, on the tall end, like you would uh, a piece of wood. I think if we just come. Let's move this track over. No, 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 it needs to be over here. Because it's gonna have to lean on something when you walk away. So the closer, closer to the wall, the better. So right there, but I think we'll set it on the ground. Let's just go down to the ground, then we'll pick it up and we'll put it on the track. And then I'm gonna brace it off the wall. So we're gonna go, I guess we can probably carry it all the way over there, right? Yeah. You say that, we had three people last time. All right, ready? One, two, three. Yeah, it's not that bad. All right, onto the track. We on? Look at that. There you go. Look at that, Sergio. She works. Nice. Stay. Stay. That's right. Look at that. Professional, Sergio. All right, let go. All right, super stoked to see this thing standing up. This is a large gate. Now that I see it standing, I'm not concerned about putting in any type of vertical support. The only issue I see at the current moment is there's a little radius to these one by threes. So obviously we want to be right here in the center. Well, let's sand this up straight. You can see that without having something right here, it almost flushes out in the back. So we would need like a half inch uh, flat bar to push these forward. However, even if they're not pushed forward, it gives the desired look that I'm looking for. And I, I think I'm gonna compromise on those being shifted a half inch forward to gain the look of not having the vertical supports. Now, my next issue is we need to build again the roller guides. But here's something that's crossed my mind and I've seen it done two different ways. But we're gonna need a whiteboard to demonstrate. Alrighty, so typically, if you have a gate, you have an entrance, right? We've got a, let's just do a standard entrance. We'll say block column, block column, and then you have your gate in between. Don't mind my drawing skills right now, it's like over my head. Whatever, right? We're not even gonna worry about that too much. Okay, but on these ends, we have our two by two and our two by two framing the gate in. Okay, wheels, wheels. Now, if I were designing and building this gate, I want this two by two and this two by two to be inside of the column, right? Because you did that as a decorative feature, you want it to look good. The problem is, let's do a little top down view. So we have column, we have gate, and we have column. Well, when we're putting our roller guides on, they need to entrap both sides of the gate. 
right? So the problem is if you have your gate all the way out in the opening to where you see both sides of these two by twos, it's centered up in the opening. These roller guides either need to be out in the open, which that kind of defeats the purpose because you'll have a post in the middle of your opening that you're driving into, or they need to be back here. So what a lot of guys do is they'll build a gate like I built, right? So you build a nice 20 foot gate. Again, we've got our two by two end piece, our two by two end piece. We'll just put a couple of these in. Boom. So they build a nice 20 foot gate, but because you have to entrap the gate in these gate rollers, which are going to go basically here, they end up putting that behind the column or behind the post. So basically you get this look, which hides all of that two by two that you put on the end and framed it out. Now, some people might like this look, but I've seen some really decorative gates where this piece is decorative, but they end up hiding it because they had to shrink the columns in to be able to catch these gate rollers. What other guys do is they'll take their, you know, our 20 foot gate and they'll add on a little extension piece at the top. I guess we'd need one at the bottom as well. And sometimes they have bracing uh, I've seen it done a bunch of different ways. Now we can capture the gate inside of the gate rollers. Remember, this is our gate rollers. Hopefully all this makes sense. So I feel like I'm just scribbling. The column would be here and here, right? Whatever, our two by two is there. Um, but this little extension wing piece allows us to catch these rollers behind the column. It's out of sight. And then down here, you need this again because for the track, for the actual motor, because obviously you want the motor hidden too, not right on the edge. So I'm contemplating, do I add to these extension pieces? Do I shrink in and you don't really see this post? I'm not sure. Now, granted, we're not doing big block columns like this. We're only doing a four by four post. So it's not like it would block a ton, uh, but it's something I need to actually decide right now. The other thing I could do, instead of having to add the extension, is I can make this apparatus that holds these gate rollers, like so. And grab one of these rollers so again all this hopefully makes a little more sense to you guys some of you most of you are probably following along but just in case so again this is the guide roller this is going to go on the side of the gate that's what pinches it in place where there'll be another one on the back side but what we could do is we could make this piece like a u-shape uh kind of stuck here we're gonna have to drop this or one hand down so i can make a u that goes here over the top and back down. It'll hold the roller here as well as the roller there. And if I do it right and I get it to line up directly with that two by, when this thing is closed all the way, you won't actually see this two by, but you will see this two by. Uh, and maybe that'll just kind of compensate for it. And then over there, wherever that post ends up, that's where it ends up. But I don't know guys. I really don't want to weld on extension pieces, but I think I'm gonna have to anyway, cause I'm not doing a chain drive on this gate. We're actually doing a gear drive. I found a decently priced motor on Amazon, had really good reviews. Um, I know a lot of you gate builders out there are gonna like swear by LiftMaster, or swear by whatever, and trust me, when we're doing the main entrance front gates, they're gonna be some gnarly LiftMaster motors. But for this, uh, I think we can get away with, with what I got planned. But I think for the bottom, because we're not doing chain drive, we're gonna need an extension for the gearing to grab onto. And I kinda wanted to be done welding on the actual gate itself but that might be what we have to do. Alrighty y'all, so as much as I hate doing things for no reason and having to redo things, uh, I think going with the extensions off of there and there is the right answer for this. We've used up all of the 14 gauge two by three, because again, these were 20 foot long sections. So all we had was like these tiny little cutoffs, but I do have some leftover eighth inch two by three from when we did the gooseneck or the mini gooseneck trailer for the mini truck. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna make a 16 inch extension piece we're gonna put on the bottom which means I totally capped that end for no reason. <laughs> um, and we're gonna have to cap this end. And then I'm probably gonna do just a two by two up top, just something small right there. All this needs to come back to is to wherever our, our little roller system is. So we'll probably just come back to maybe here. So let's get this cut. Stuff's pretty thick. Now, if you guys own one of these or don't own one of these, I recommend you buy it. But also get this little, I believe they're called roll locks. This roll lock adapter, uh, I got this on Amazon. It's this whole piece right here and it actually came with bags and bags and bags of these mini flap discs, of whatever these boogers are called and mini sanding discs. I mean like 
giant Ziploc bags full of them for very cheap on Amazon. And again, these things are great. So I'm going ahead and just putting the cap on this one before I actually mount it on, just because, I don't know, it's easier when it's over here. Then sitting off the side of the gate, I've already done three sides, so we're just gonna seal up this top. Now I'd already clamped up this piece of two by before I decided to cap them off and I don't really want to unclamp it. I've got a bunch of straight pieces that I've run over the plane of this. That way uh, I'm trying my best to ensure that this piece of two by is in the exact same plane on this axis and on this axis as the gate. That way it doesn't really look funky or chatter if this part enters where the rollers are going to be. We want it all to be nice and straight. So, so this extra piece is clamped along the side and that's keeping us straight this way and this top piece is keeping us straight this way. So let's go ahead and get this welded on. Okay, let's get this unclamped. Then we can weld it all the way around. Then we gotta clamp that bottom one on. Looking pretty good. Looking pretty good and pretty straight. Okay, y'all, we've got both extension pieces put on and you're probably gonna wonder why I didn't do a three inch piece up there as well. And to be honest with you, I didn't wanna do all of this work boxing in this corner for nothing. So part of my like pride was like, well, if I put a smaller one on there, then it means I didn't box that off for nothing because I would have needed to box off that bottom section. I originally wanted to do them both two inches, but the reason I did this bottom one three inches because again, I'm not using a chain drive, I'm using a gear drive, which actually has this like track uh, with teeth on it that attach to the gate. And I don't know exactly where that needs to be and being that we have a full three inches to play here, I figured we should carry that all the way down and have three inches to play here. I'm not gonna put an angled support. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I just think it looks better without it. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna load this up right now. We've got Papa Rano right there. He's gonna help us load this in the truck or put it on the trailer, I should say. We're gonna take it out to the ranch. We're gonna pour some concrete, uh, test fit it. Hopefully the gate motor shows up tomorrow. We got a, got a lot going on tomorrow. But for now, let's load this monster on the trailer. It ain't too bad. Ain't too bad. That's probably better closer to the middle. Here, I'm gonna pick it up and move that. Two by three. There she is. Alrighty, y'all, she is all strapped down. That is as far as we're gonna get in this video. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you're not without any future content. And don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Let's roll the outro! Damn. Uh. Yeah.